Hi everyone and welcome to Fridays with Fenning. Let me start with a question. Uh, at Christmas, are you a thoughtful present buyer or an off the list present buyer for the people that you love? You know, in other words, do you choose something that you think or know that they'd like and it kind of comes as a surprise or do you get them just whatever they've asked for? You see, your answer to that question might give you a bit of an insight into the love language that I want to pick up on today. You see, I'm an off the list giver. I, I love giving gifts and I want to give something that I know that somebody wants. So. In the past, uh, at Christmas time, I've asked Sarah to write down what she wants. I go off on Christmas Eve and buy as much of the list as I can afford, and then I give it to her the following day. And it's kind of job done and everyone's happy. Or are they? You see, now Sarah is much more attuned to things than me, and she notices if I highlight a need or if I say that I like something, and she stores that away until it's my birthday or Christmas. And so her gifts to me are, are a surprise. You know, they've been thought through, not just picked off a list. And I wish I did the same, as my gifts are always kind of predictable and less thought through. Why? Well, it's because this isn't my primary love language. It's not that I don't buy gifts. It's not that I don't like giving gifts, it's just not the key way for me to express or receive love. And Sarah could be quite hurt if I don't show enough appreciation for the gift that she's given me because she's put a lot of thought into it. Why? Because she loves me and it's an expression of, a symbol of, her love for me. Now, do you recognise this tension in any of your close relationships? And if so, you know, you've been speaking different languages and it's worth talking about it. Because over the past few weeks, I've been exploring the different love languages that we all use to express and receive love. You know, you can catch up on that series so far just by going to our website at forgechurch.com. But we all have a primary love language, whether it's words of affirmation, quality time, kind acts of service, physical touch or thoughtful gifts. And it's the language of thoughtful gifts that I just want to focus on today. You see, gift giving comes naturally to us. Children love to make homemade cards or paintings to give to family members. You know, they come in with a flower from the garden and they present it to us. There, there is something in our genes that makes us want to give. And so having this love language isn't about being materialistic or just wanting stuff. No, gifts are symbols that have emotional value attached to them. And, and for some people, without gifts as that visual symbol, love can be questioned. You know, love is always expressed by giving, whether it's the gift of time, kind words or acts, or an actual physical gift. So in his book, The Five Love Languages, Gary Chapman tells the story of a married couple who came to talk to him th uh, three years after attending one of his love languages seminars. And the wife, Kate, said that a miracle had happened in their marriage over the past three years. So she spoke about how they'd been on the edge of breaking up, that their relationship had been empty. And, uh, and she had frequently said that she needed his love, but just got nothing back. She would tried so hard to show love to him, to be a good wife, but she felt unloved and unappreciated. She said this, I felt like um, he stopped dating me the day we got married and then just took me for granted. So what happened? What changed? Asked Gary. Well, we went to your seminar and Doug didn't say very much during or after it. But then on Monday afternoon, when he came home from work, he bought me a rose and said, I, I, I thought you deserved this. On Tuesday, he bought a pizza home for tea to save me cooking. On Wednesday, he bought the kids a gift and me a pot plant saying that the rose would die soon and maybe I'd like something uh, that would be around a, a lot longer. Thursday, he wrote a card uh, saying how he found it hard to express his love, but that he hoped the card would reassure her just how much he cared. On Friday, it was cookies and Saturday, he got a babysitter uh, and they went out for dinner together and Kate was blown away. Dr. Chapman, you have to understand, she said, that this man had never given me a flower since we got married. He'd never written me a card. He always said it was a waste of money because you just read it and then you throw it away. So Doug explained what had happened. He said, I listened to your seminar about the love languages and I recognised that thoughtful gifts was Kate's primary language. 
Now, I'd stopped buying her anything after marrying as, as I didn't think we could afford it. But I decided to buy her a gift every day for a week to see if it made any difference to her. And it made a massive difference. And so I apologised for being so dense all those years and that I'd failed to meet, uh, meet her need for love, but that I did love her and that I would become a gift giver for the rest of my life. Not every day, but at least once a week. And he did. And Kate said, he's like a new man. You wouldn't believe how happy we've been. Now, that can be the power of speaking the right love language. You know, thoughtful gifts don't always have to be about spending money, but to become a gift giver, you might have to change your attitude about money, just as Doug did. You know, we all have perceptions about the purpose of money. Some of us have a spending orientation and others have a saving perspective. Now, if you're happy to spend, uh, you'll have little difficulty purchasing gifts for those that you love. You know, whether that's friends, kids, those close to you. But if you're a saver, you may need to work harder at this because it, it can seem like a waste of money, but it's not. Because if receiving gifts is the primary love language of someone that you love, then you're investing in your relationship with them and filling their emotional love tank. So one of Sarah's work colleagues, Steph, said that her husband bought her a piano as she used to play when she was younger. And she said that um, uh, she's loving it more and more as the years have gone on and that her husband just likes to lie there on the sofa and listen to her play. Now, that's a gift that keeps on giving. But gifts don't always have to be expensive or even require money. Sarah's friend Vanessa spoke about a year that her sister collected recipes from family and friends and made them into a book for her as a present. And she said it's become even more special as some of those people who gave recipes have since passed away. And so it's so much more than just a recipe book. That's a thoughtful gift. You know, becoming a gift giver at work, you know, taking in goodies could help transform the atmosphere in the workplace because for others, it's an expression of love and appreciation. So my question is, is this your primary love language? Or do you know someone whose primary love language is thoughtful gifts? If so, why not invest in that relationship this weekend by giving a gift that shows that you love, that you value, that you appreciate them? It really might make a positive difference to that relationship. You have a good weekend. Thanks again for watching.